It's kind of funny, an old hillbilly like me has a machine like this, huh? <laughs> you, you can blame uh, Matt at Lost Creek Machine for selling it to me 22 years ago for $9,000. Where were you? <laughs> okay. Enough of that. Okay, now I'm going to show you something that your wife does not do. This machine is running in reverse at 200 RPM. And it's not in back air, it's in open belt. And I'll show you what your machine will not do. I'm going to put my hand on the spindle and try to stop it. Let's look at the tachometer while I do that. You hear that growl? That is speed compensation. As it senses the load and a reference voltage is used. And when there's a difference between that, it adds power to the uh, armature circuit to maintain speed. Let's try that again. Look at this. You can hear it growling. But it, the tachometer only moves slightly when I let go. I'm going to start grabbing it like it's cutting under load. See that? When I let go, it'll jump a little. But if I put a load on it slowly, then let go of it slowly. The speed hardly changes at all. There's some advantages to that. Now, one of the things I'm going to get at here is on a machine like this, you never, ever use sandpaper to get to your finished size. You just don't do that. And I'll get into that a little bit more, but I want to point that out. I'll be back in a bit here. I'm going to let this machine warm up. I, I worked with a guy named Bill that uh, used these uh, Monarchs for uh, probably 10 years longer than I have. And uh, Bill said, if there's a better way than this, Monarch would have built it. <laughs> One thing that Bill did, and I think it's a good idea, is uh, really lube the thing up before you move anything. So Bill would, uh, you know, kind of uh, just just kind of squirt some oil on everything, you know, because oil's pretty cheap. Something like that. That's how Bill do it. Yeah. That looks pretty good, huh? Okay, now I got the thing running forward, and uh, now I'm gonna use the carriage and just let it go and kind of pick up some oil. I got everything wiped down real good. You know, I keep this covered. And uh, and I grind right here, so this thing really gets uh, the best treatment I can give it under the circumstances. And most of the time, uh, machines like this are in pro proximity 
to uh, grind us. And even if you have a grinder quite a distance away, even 20 feet, if it's in the same room, it's a problem. So a machine like this, you definitely want to keep clean. This is the quietest machine I have, I think. <laughs> Okay, get the carriage going the other direction. And, uh, scored a bunch of oil back here. Looking good. Get that, uh, oil up on the clutches. Now that's one of the problems with these things set. These uh, cone clutches get dry, and they're supposed to work smooth as silk. And they're working good, and they should slip. And this is one of the ways I test to see if uh, the clutches are working correctly. I don't have this on very tight, just that much. Then you grab a handle and you want it to stop doing that jerk motion. And then you know that the, the clutch is oiled and this thing smooth as silk. Let's try the uh, cross slide. Got that on lightly and I'm going to grab it. See? Smooth. Put a little tighter. It'll get to a point that I can't hold it, but see it's not uh, jerking like this one was at first. Okay. Okay. Get warmed up. Back in a minute. It's getting warmed up. 